While the industry's anchors remain lowered, Norwegian Cruise Line remains full steam ahead. It will be the most spectacular facility in the world. NCL teams from across the globe are busy preparing under the new normal for a safe return to cruising. We want to get our guests back on board the ships. Everything from the health and safety of the guests and NCL crew. It's key and it's a priority to what's going on today for everyone on board to be safe. To the entertainment. As soon as we get that green light, we'll be getting entertainment back at the high seas. The impeccable service. Our goal every single day is to make thousands and thousands and thousands of people happy. And of course, the delectable cuisine. I'd eat this all day long. NCL is going above and beyond to ensure that their guest experience remains, as always, oh. second to none. And we're going to take it and we're going to elevate the experience and make it even more excellent. For the first time since the lockdown, NCL's Jose Negron is en route to Great Stirrup Key in the Bahamas. I'm the Vice President of Private Island Operations. I'm responsible for overseeing our two private destinations. Getting to GSC is no small feat, but it's well worth it. First stop, the beloved small neighboring island of Great Harbor home to many NCL employees. Circle! Good morning, boy. Been a long Good time. Morning. You know, it feels great just to be back and trying to get things rolling again, and hopefully we can stimulate the economy here once again. Man, it's good, man, man. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Let's go. Okay, let's do it. The impact of the COVID pandemic on the cruise industry has been widespread throughout the Bahamas. Great Harbor is the main island here. It's approximately seven miles south of us, and approximately 700 people live there which the majority depend on our island for income. It's the first thing that we try to bring as many local people back, because we want to help the community, they're our neighbors. The moment we start cruising, it, it's definitely going to stimulate Great Harbor. I'm sure it will put a lot of smiles on everybody. The purpose of Jose's visit is to check on all the critical COVID protocols and upgrades to NCL's private island. Circle, thank you for everything. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank Love you, baby. You have a wonderful day. Now on to the final destination of the day, NCL's Great Stirrup Key. Let's go. This private island excursion has always been a favorite amongst past guests. It's imperative that all the new upgrades are above and beyond. You made it. It's crazy. Welcome nice back. To see you again. <laughs> Let's go back to the room so we can review our plan. It's been a long day of traveling. After some much needed rest, Jose will hit the ground running first thing in the morning. Back in Miami at the Norwegian Cruise Line Test Kitchen, the NCL culinary team is turning up the heat for the final tasting of the new bistro menu with the discerning executive tasting team. We have an executive tasting program in that every dish that goes onto the ship or every change that is made to a menu is run through our senior management team. Most of the items that we're going to change from previous menu items or improve, a big part of what we're doing with the revision of the bistro menu is making them more authentic, more French. And that's where we do need some feedback. You know, La Bistro has always been one of our most favorite restaurants among our past guests. And we're going to take it and we're going to elevate the experience, which is hard. It's hard to take something that's excellent already and make it even more excellent. It was the first specialty restaurant on the Norwegian brand. I think because it's the legacy restaurant, it needs to be a cut above. Frank, Perry, and Mark taste and examine each dish to ensure they are held to the highest of standards. When it comes to menu changes, they're hard to impress. These executives really understand our customer and give us feedback based on that. Frank and Harry are very discerning. Frank built a whole cruise brand on being the best culinary cuisine at sea, and he has a very discerning palate. Can I look at the old menu for comparison? So I always look for balance. So meats, beef tenderloin, gotta have. To men on poultry, you got duck and you got chicken. The first one comes directly from you. Steak tartare? Steak tartare. So this is a little Frank. bit of a twist. It's not the traditional steak tartare. 
What is different about it is we have taken an approach of mixing hand-cut beef with tartar sauce. You're hit with an abundance of flavor, the capers, the shallots, and tarragon, very bright. And while you're tasting and eating it, it doesn't need anything else. You're each going to get a sampling plate, and we're going to put in the show plate in the center here so you can see what the presentation will be like. A little mustard, a little tarragon. Yeah, I like it. The toasted baguette is very good. It is. Yes. It's really good. So you think this one could fly? Yeah. I, I'll, I'll order it. With one win under their belt, the executive culinary team keep the pressure on to ensure each dish is utter perfection. In New York City, NCL Entertainment's Robert Hertenstein reconnects with world-renowned costume designer John Christensen to review the inventory needed to relaunch NCL's lineup of hit Broadway shows. Working with John Christensen is a dream come true, really. His caliber and talent is beyond. I mean, he's designed for Cher and Britney and show after show on Broadway. The fact that we get to work with him one-on-one -on, -one on these shows is so exciting. Hi. Robbie! Oh my god, John, it's great nice to, to see, see you. you. How's it going? Yes. Great, how are you yeah. doing? Terrific. When you get off the elevator in his shop, it's amazing to look around and see the history and his legacy. So here's some beading work that we're doing, getting that Excellent. moving forward, trying to get ahead of the curve here. Right. We have a show that was delivered the day we closed down. His craftsmanship is precise and detailed and exactly what you're looking for. Not only does he do that for himself, but he exudes that to his staff and his workers, and they have that same passion, that same focus. And you know Meg. Meg, oh, it's so great to see you. It's been a while. It's almost more on the table than the actual fabric. You, yeah, you start to wonder how many left there on the garment. <laughs> so come on in. Let me show you to my new fitting room. Great. We just opened this space just as the pandemic hit. I think we had about 10 fittings in here in the winter. And now here we are. It's lovely. I'm okay, very great. happy with it. All right. So how are you? I'm doing okay. Yeah? How are you doing? Great. We're very excited because we were one of the first American companies to produce six. I saw the show, fell in love with it. I called my boss, Richard Ambrose, who's the senior vice president of entertainment. And I said, you've got to see this show. So I remember coming here on uh, March 12th for the opening of Six on Broadway, but oh. unfortunately that day it closed. How did you all deal with entertainment being closed down? What happened to you? We had just had our last round of fittings a couple of days before, I think it was the 10th. We had the understudies come in and, and on March 12th I came in to get my suit ready to go to opening night right. for Six, looking forward to the party and exactly. the whole nine exactly. yards. And uh, changed my mind when I got here and went home because I wasn't feeling well. My partner and my kids got me in the minivan. We drove to the hospital and I stayed there for seven days. And then when I came out, my shop was closed. My job was gone. Uh, my employees were furloughed. The stores in my town were closed. Like everything had just closed as we all know. Yeah. Uh, it was eerie to say the least. When we found out that John had COVID, we were all very concerned. Luckily, he came out on the other end beautifully and, and able to continue his work. I think the, the challenging thing that we had was to go from being so busy. My shop often is doing at least five active shows, but as many as 24. 56 people humming around this shop regularly, working furiously to get the work done, and then there was nothing. So we're excited to get back Exactly. to partnership with you exactly. and get these costumes up and running, get our cast up and shining on stage. That's absolutely wonderful. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear the people are starting to get back to work because we need it. You've been working on Blazing Boots. How's that going? Blazing Boots is going great. We have a lot more work to do, but it's going well. I have a lot of things to show you. Let's take a look. Okay. This is absolutely thrilling. The health and safety of crew and guests remains NCL's top priority. Valerie Sapot and her team are charged with procuring tens of thousands of items for NCL's entire fleet, including critical medical PPE and equipment. Health and safety is extremely important, right? It's always been extremely important to NCL. In this time period, it just takes on a new level, I would say. 
there are critical items that are needed. Now we're phasing into the restart. We're kind of bringing things back and sourcing all these new items and two areas, medical and PPE, which have risen to the top, are areas that I'm focused on daily, right? With over 200,000 masks and PPE needed, NCL turned to local vendor and longtime partner MNC uniforms. We started with over 30 masks. We sent about 30 to the medical department, and so they would review it. When we got the approval list from them, MNC came out on top. The quality of the mask, the antimicrobial fabric, the adjustability on the mask, everything we were looking for, MNC was able to produce for us. Valerie, I wanted to show you, this is where the mask starts. You know, we get a big piece of fabric, and then we cut the fabric, and this is where we do the logo. So he's cutting these with scissors. Yeah, the whole piece. Once it comes here, we need to start cutting down the fabric to be able to come to the actual part of the mask. So you can see it's very painstaking. It has to be done one by one. This is amazing. That's a lot of detailed work. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking in the hundreds of thousands, mm -hmm. I mean, thank you so much. I appreciate how much detail is going into all of this. Oh, wow. So you can see this is and like we've started putting the stuff together. It really hasn't been difficult to get items. It's more difficult to get the quality items, right? Those items that we have to sample and review with our medical team, review with our operations team to make sure that they have all of the requirements the CDC requires us to have, and as well, an internal requirement. Okay. All right, so you can see that we put together already the mask, and you see the quality oh, of yeah, what we're the, doing. The fabric you know, is great. The fabric is great. The fit is really good, because it's similar to the one I have. It holds up very well for moisture and everything. And then now that we're starting to do the packing, now I have the space to be able to fulfill and do the, the rest of the item. Okay. This, this is, is all for delivery for Friday. For Friday, yeah. okay. Once we come to this part of filling the orders for the mask, this is our quality control at the end. We really have to be detailed to make sure that all the masks don't have threads coming out and make sure that all the sewing and everything came out good. So she's literally taking she's it taking masks from One by masks. one, making sure that they're all put together. Then we put it in boxes and it's counted, match the PO that we have with you guys. Okay. And then they're ready to go. Wow, this is amazing. I can't believe how much is going into each mask individually. Thank you for letting me come today. Thank you very much for the business. This is what's actually helping us uh, maintain afloat. Everything looks great. Thank you right. very much. No problem, thank you. After approving the necessary PPE mask kits, Valerie and Harold Betancourt meet up at NCL's Apollo Warehouse to review the first shipment. Let's open one of these okay. boxes, see what's inside. These should be the uh, guest amenity kits. I was just at MNC and then we were inspecting these, so I'm glad you guys got the first shipment. This shipment's for the Norwegian Jewel. It's about 10,000, but overall, we've got close to 200,000 kits coming. 200,000? 200,000 between all the vessels. We will be actually inspecting the pallets. We're gonna be looking for quality control, making sure that every kit has the mask and also sanitizer. So these are the ones that go to all the guests. This all looks great, Harold. Where do these go to now? Receiving department is gonna assist us to get the packing list of the pallets. They put it on that area for final inspection. Once that's done, it's going to be prepared for loading into the trailers and containers that we're sending to the Norwegian Jewel. Now that the PPE kits have been inspected and passed for quality control, they're ready to go. It's key and it's a priority to what's going on today for our crew to be safe, our guests to be safe, you know, everyone on board to be safe. Thank you so much for letting me come down today. I'll be back definitely to check up on this stuff. Anytime, buddy. Thank you. Back at NCL's headquarters, the executive culinary team continues to impress. Now, next up is Belgian endive salad. Not a typical American dish. For the head of lettuce that you see, that one is actually deconstructed. For the executive tasting, we present to them as we would to our guests in a restaurant setting and or environment so that they get a true experience of what the dishes are and then gain their blessing for rollout to the fleet. I like the dressing and I like the cheese. I liked it all. It's like very, it. it's very good. It was delicious. I miss our ship's food. Next item up is gonna be the roast duck. This is the maple leaf duck breast. Glazed carrot, sweet pea puree, and the orange sauce. The process for tasting products and, and experimenting for the menus 
is pretty lengthy. We'll ask them feedback. What did you think of the menu? What items did you love? Now, Chef, if I ordered this, what would be my side? Is this what I would get? This is exactly what you would get. Potato. On this dish, I'd have some mashed potatoes. The, the orange sauce is very subdued. Duck is great, perfectly cooked. This is the lobster thermidor. Few restaurants now have it because it's such a complicated dish to make. And that's a good sized portion. The lobster thermidor is sauteed in butter. We're adding a, a cream sauce uh, that is reduced half and half white wine, heavy cream. There's uh, mustard, tarragon cooked together, filled back in the shell. It's an amazing presentation. You know, the first taste of everyone was just like, wow. It was without a doubt for me the best lobster thermidor I've ever tasted. A bon nun. If it's executed properly, it really is a yeah. uh, spectacular dish. I'd eat this all day long. That's impressive. This is braised Moroccan style lamb shank. We braised the lamb shank with all its mirepoix aromatics and so on, deboned it, glazed it with the same sauce, and added sweet potato, the grilled lamb chop uh, to that. And to balance everything, it has golden raisins and apricots in the sauce. That's really good. That looks good. We were working on the Moroccan spiced lamb dish over a long period and had at minimum 12 different versions of it. Thankfully, we, we came up with something that everyone seems to rave about now. And what do you think of the spices? It's absolutely fantastic. A great way that they innovated. I like it a lot. This is definitely an upgrade over the current bistro menu. You guys really knocked it out of the ballpark. And we have two new desserts, the Fraser Grate and the Chocolate Marquis. This is delicious. Wow. I'm gonna give you the ultimate compliment. This is a Parisian patisserie quality dessert. I truly mean it. If what they say is true, that a way to a man's and a woman's heart is through their belly, you nailed it. This is as good as it gets. It's a tremendous, tremendous display. Uh, if I you mean, keep th this up, yes. Norwegian is gonna become a foodie <laughs> cruise line. Right. I think we're well on our way there already. Frank saying that we're a major foodie cruise line is an amazing compliment. For him saying and, and promoting that is an acknowledgement that cannot come from any other and wouldn't be more important. You know, I think the guest reaction to the bistro menu is going to be phenomenal. Culinary team did a great job. I would hang my hat on the fact that you will not find a better French dining experience on any ship out there. Back in New York City, with new safety precautions to consider and a multitude of costumes to finish, Robert Hertenstein and John Christensen go over all the designs to ensure that they'll be ready to shine when NCL ships return to sail. What's wonderful working with John and his shop is his craftsmanship is beyond anything I could ever imagine. They take such pride and such passion in their work. The artwork is so beautiful. Isn't I love it great? your shop and what you have created for us. It's oh, just thank beautiful you very work. much. He's brought most of his team back to work on, for instance, Blazing Boots. There are over 200 pieces of costumes alone for that one 45 minute show. And we have to get that ready. So we're kind of, you know, in a, in a push and a rush. This set of clothes are finished okay. and ready to be delivered. The leather work is done and getting its final round of snaps Great. and decor. And they're gonna be sparkling and stunning. Oh, but what? let's not forget to talk about Fancy. Oh, the most amazing right? dress ever built. It's gorgeous. One of our favorites to build with all the jingles. It takes so many of my people to build this dress alone with all the applique, the beading. In Blazing Boots, the Fancy dress is another piece that the audience doesn't realize how many people it takes to build this costume. And somehow, it all comes together so beautifully. I have two teams that work on it. One does the train alone and the other team does the illusion dress. And I know we have this on three ships, so there's multiple dresses right. you have to make for this. Right, oh, right, we love it. It's my favorite moment in the show. Love it, love it, love it. A beaded gown can take up to 40,000 hours with all those little beads and the threading. Putting it all together is so time consuming and so detailed, but it's flawlessly executed by him and his shop. I know we have some pieces for elements we're working on too. Right, right, right. right. Okay. So we have a show called Elements, and it's one of our signature shows. And what we're discovering is, as we come back from this pandemic, there's some adjustments that we have to make. So just a few things for Elements to look at. 
We have our water. Now, this is one of the comments I think we're gonna have to talk about developing a face mask. Oh. She goes through the house a bit, so maybe this would be one we could look at for the aesthetic of the costume design. To me, that kind of screams out for a mask, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We'll talk to Eduardo and see what, what he can come up with. So, with all that trim and everything, that's a lot of work. We right. have a lot to do in a short time. Are we gonna be able to get this done? Of course, we always get it done. That's true, you've never let me down yet. Right, it'll take, <laughs> it'll take some doing, but getting people back to work is right. important, right. but it is about taking your time, being safe. Correct, doing it safely. Move forward, but we'll, of course we'll get it done. When we had to shut down the ships and send everybody home, it, it was hard for us because we know that their livelihood is dependent on working on those ships. And when those ships go out of operation, so do they. And how are they gonna provide for their families? How are they going to sustain this suspension that we're in? It's a hardship that we never want to put on anyone. And I can relate to his deep care for his employees because Norwegian as a company have that same philosophy and outlook to our employees because they are family. Wow, looking at all the stuff is really amazing. There's so much work. Again, thank you so much for your work and your dedication. I'm very excited and can't wait to get us back. Me too. After being away from his team for almost a year, Jose Negron is eager to reunite with everyone and see all the incredible upgrades they've been making to Great Stirrup Key. After not being here for a year, I'm so impressed with the work that the team has done. They've maintained the island and taken it to the next level. Good hey, morning, boss. How was your first night at the villa? You know, Mo, I was totally impressed. I've never seen it from a guest perspective, but it's very really impressive. I can see why the guests are constantly talking about the villas here. Happy to hear this. Good. Can uh, we gather the team so we can do a full walkthrough yeah, of the facility? Sure, yeah. yeah. And absolutely. show me firsthand what you guys have done. When that lockdown happened, the team took advantage because we didn't have any ships coming in or guests coming in. So we were able to focus on the COVID upgrades. I feel very proud to be back here on the island to be with you. My first impression of the island, it's awesome. It's great to see everybody, and I was very impressed because the pictures didn't do justice. The place looks like brand new again. Over the next few days, I'm gonna be walking around with your department heads, reviewing all the initiatives. I told the guys, just don't meet the standard, let's exceed the standards, and that's, that's what we've done here. Back in March, you guys sent us a message, NCL. We believe in the future. We heard that loud and clear, but I want you guys to know that we believe in you even more. With so much ground to cover, Jose heads out to inspect all the upgrades. His first stop, reviewing the food and beverage areas. As you see here in our main galley area, we already have set up the stanchions. Due to COVID, we have to implement some standards to protect the staff and the passengers as well. Like the ships, the guests are no longer allowed to approach the bar. We'll be providing the service. They will take a plate and they will dish up for each individual person. Our main priority is the health and safety of our guests at all times. Now it's time to inspect one of the highlights of this NCL excursion, the zip line. Tell me what we have going here. We have our shoes, special shoes made for the zip line. The shoes will be sanitized and placed in plastic packets. Once you come over the shoes, we will set you up with all the necessary equipment. Everybody will get Everybody. gloves, gloves as well will be sanitized and hung up to dry. We have to be the cleanest, the safest, the funnest. That's the only way we're gonna be different from the competition. Once you're all kitted up, we'll move on to the elevator. The elevator will be sanitized uh, consistently after every use and all touch points. With all the work happening, Jose and Wayne head up to the platform to ensure that nothing on the ground below will impact the guest experience from above. Okay, welcome to the top of the zip line. We have a safety mechanism that you have to stay attached to at all times. It's pretty simple, it just goes over the top. Please watch your step. Stay connected at all times. All right, welcome to the top of this new run. Listen, do me a favor. Let's get all those containers aligned properly out of the guest view. This is the million dollar view and we don't want the guests to see. Oh, we'll get on that. Understood. All right, it has to be exceptional. Everything in the back of the house has to be perfect as well. Now, nothing will stand in the way of the best view of the island. Next, the team heads over to see how the beach area is coming along. The newly added five acres of beach to Silver Cove will make it easy for guests to relax and unwind while safely social distancing. The construction team created an additional five acres of beach. We're putting stacks of food 
you know, just maintaining social distance eight feet apart. My guys are measuring them, maintaining the social distancing, and throughout we'll have eight feet as well. Because of the extended amount of uh, beach we have, we have over 4,000 lounge chairs, and we'll be able to spread out the chairs in clusters of four, separating them eight feet apart, providing proper social distancing even with the lounge chairs. So coming into the rental side, guests are gonna enter on the side, follow the stanchions, and the six feet uh, uh, social distancing. So yellow floats will be stationed here on the floor behind the roped off area. That's where guests will collect them. And the floats will be washed, uh, rinsed and sanitized, hung up and every hour on the hour, the floats will be fogged and, and disinfected. Perfect, our guests will definitely have a great guest experience even with all the COVID protocols. They will, they Perfect. will definitely. All right, thank you. Every day after the ship leaves, the staff will be fumigating to ensure that the next guests have a proper sanitized facility. We focus on the health and safety of our guests. That being said, we focus on the sanitation and fumigation of all the rooms after occupancy. We make sure that 99% 99 of the germs are off. It's very important for us and the team that we remain number one. We've double checked everything and implemented everything to ensure our customers and our crew members are safe at all times. We're gonna lead the path in the world with having the best service, best experiences. When the guests come to this island, they love the simplicity. It's what they envision a private island to be like. We're sophisticated, but simple. It allows you to really relax and enjoy your time here on the island. On his last night, Jose gathers his team for a fun-filled beach bonfire to thank them for all their hard work and to remind them that in the near future, GSC will shine once again as guests enjoy everything the island has to offer. These guys bent over backwards to take this island to the next level. Everything looks refreshed. You think that we built everything yesterday. We wouldn't be where we are without you. You guys went beyond the call of duty. It tells me how much you really care about the company, and I can't be more proud to, I think we assembled the best team in the world. With that being said, guys, without you guys, we wouldn't be Norwegian Cruise Line or Great Stirrup K. Salud. Salud. Cheers. 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 Next time on Embark, the series. Today is exciting because we get to update you on where things are with some of these great initiatives for return to service. The FaceX facial recognition is a completely touchless experience for the guests. So if you can just stand in front of the camera and then it's going to record your temperature as well as use your facial recognition. We have a brand new terminal at the Port of Miami. You have no idea how excited we are to start cruising again.